Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy. And today we've got two guns to take a peek at. Uh, the gun on the top is a Daisy Red Rider, uh, number 111, model 40, with the coveted copper bands that one of my subscribers has sent in. This was his father's gun, uh, picked up sometime in the 40s, and he just wants the grit, the grime, cleaned off of it. Go through the mechanicals, make sure things are copacetic, and possibly, maybe, send along a Model 25 mag if I can scare one up once we get done with the cleanup and evaluation. What I decided to do though today was because this is really nice example of one of the one of a 111 Model 40. Uh, this is the pre-war uh, gun. It was built uh, from 1940 to about 1942 when a little thing called World War II got in the way. And Daisy quit making BB guns and began making other vitally needed defense supplies. It is the first iteration of the Red Rider, which is Daisy's flagship lever action air gun. Uh, and you will see there's a couple of features on this gun that distinguish it from the millions of Red Riders that have followed. Uh, the early production guns featured the copper coated barrel band. This was a big selling item. It was featured in May. Uh, featured on all the print ads and publication ads that they did for the gun in the brief period of time they were selling it prior to World War II. What identifies this as an early production copper band uh, Red Rider is the fact that, hey, it's got a copper band. And let's run down here to the muzzle and take a look at that front barrel band. See that little dent right there? That is a peen. And that is where you actually take a punch and you physically dent the barrel shroud and the barrel band to lock them in place together, not a tack weld. Now let's drive, drop down over here and we'll take a look at what a tack weld looks like on this other gun that we'll talk about in just a minute. So the key designators are copper front sight barrel band, copper barrel band on the wrist, a cast iron lever, not an aluminum lever, but a cast iron lever, and the tiny little screw, the tiny stock screw, not a giant stock screw. Those are the three items you're looking for on one of these guns uh, to see if it is in fact a copper band Red Rider. They also have their imprint on the uh, left hand side of the stock with the Frank Harmon logo on it. Uh, this particular gun is in really good shape. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing anything to it aside from what we're going to do, which is clean up just a little bit, do a little polish and rubbing with some metal polish, try to persuade some of this rust to not be so rusty looking, but we're not going to do anything that would modify that what's left of this factory finish. And as you can see, just by looking around the edges, that it's basically been a sitter. It's been locked in a closet for most of its life. See how the, the dust gunge builds up there, unifies with the old oil, and the same basic kind of thing is going on here. It's just old grit. It gets wiped down every now and then, but was never really treated right. Now this is not going to end up being very pretty because there's already some evidence here that somebody got after it at some point in time and put a whole bunch of longitudinal scratches on it. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But the operator uh, operative instruction on this one is don't do a rest of mine. So we won't do a rest of mine. Once we get the uh, receiving process done, the gun shoots pretty strong. I'd say about 250 right now. So we'll take it apart, take a look at the mainspring, take a look at the older style seal set, which it's, it's got, which is running a uh, top hat leather seal system. This is ooh, looking really bad. I'm sure that the one in the gun looks better, but maybe not. Anyway, that may need freshening up, but we'll know after we crack it open. So this guy is going to be on the bench for a bit, but it's not a major undertaking. We're just going to try to pull some paint off of here, some grease off of there, some gunge off of there. I'm not going to do a whole lot to change the character of the weapon. Now, I wanted to show you this one too, because this is the Daisy number 108 model 39 and this is a number 111 model 40 the red rider is so this gun is a small frame daisy it is uh, was in production from 39 to 49 and if you'll notice there's a lot of similarities here that's because the receivers on both pieces are identical uh, where it makes its major change is that it has an abbreviated forearm a little micro forearm not the full length forearm that goes all the way back to here 
on the receiver just nestles up against the end of the lightning loader tube and the uh, model 39 was the first gun that daisy marketed with the lightning loader technology and that was just the fact that you could dump all your bbs down here as opposed to spilling them all over the ground and if you use a technique like this where you cup the uh cup the lightning loader port with your with your hand you could actually get your bbs in the gun pretty easy work like a champ and that was the system that was uh, taken from this gun or and incorporated into the red rider zone uh, you'll notice also that on, at the back end of it the front end of it the uh, model 39 is a slightly shorter shot tube so it utilizes the uh, same shot tube that fits the daisy 75 and some of the other small frames that were built later but this is the first iteration of that but once again, it shares a lot of common characteristics with its larger brother. Both neat guns. Uh, you'll notice that both of them use the small stock screw. Because Daisy wasn't real big on uh, spending money on putting different screws in different guns that are essentially the same. It made no sense to them then. It doesn't make any sense to them now. They don't do it. Um, but stock's not adorned. It wasn't a branded uh, item like the Red Rider. There was no comic book tie-in, no movie tie-in, none of that. The uh, Model 39, or the number 108 Model 39, was in production for 10 years and evolved into other guns with the same short barrels. So, that's what's popping here at Rest of My Daisy. Uh, we're going to get this little guy cleaned up and uh, take a look and see what she's doing numbers-wise. And then get her right back to the owner. And this one's going back into Ramuda because I don't think I'll ever really do anything to this aside from shoot the gun. It's nice. It's always good to have a piece of original ones laying around. That's all we've got for you today, kids. This is Shane Bruce with Rest of My Daisy, signing off.